So we're Lotus Foods, and my name is Ken Lee, one of the co-founders, and uh, we work with small shareholder farmers who are growing uh, heirloom or traditional varieties of rice um, and adopting a more uh, eco-agricultural way to grow rice that's known around the world as the system of rice intensification. We uh, refer to it as more crop per drop. This is a kind of a mock-up package. Uh, it's brand new packaging that just came out last summer. And the more crop per drop is, a, is a, alludes to uh, a method of growing rice that uh, saves water. So most people are not aware that it takes about 600 gallons of water to make that much rice, which is a 15 ounce bag or one pound of rice. And so that translates to be about 25 to 30 percent of Earth's fresh water goes into the production of rice alone on this planet. So with that, with the backdrop of the not enough people having enough water to drink or for human sanitation, or just to replenish groundwater systems and fragile ecosystems. Uh, so it's crucial that we come up with a way to reward farmers who are saving water. And by and the, the reason there's so much water usage is when you flood fields for rice paddies, um, uh, you use up all that water. But more to the point is the fact that that those standing fields of water create methane gas because the, the roots are rotting underwater because they can't breathe. And so uh, methane uh, in rice fields, um, most people don't tie the two together, but rice fields are the number two man-made reason for methane emissions on the planet right behind cows. And so, and aside from that, you have all those standing fields of water and the mosquitoes and the malaria diseases and so, you know, you get people like Gates and Rockefeller putting all kinds of money into mosquito netting and vaccines. If you just pull the plug on the rice fields, you go a long way to fixing that problem. So this is a kind of a miraculous type of uh, benefits that can be derived by just changing how rice is grown on the planet. And that's what we're trying to do. That's our big next initiative here at Lotus Foods is to change how rice is grown, connect those farmers to our existing distribution channel, and pay them a fair trade pay premium at it to kind of raise their livelihoods while they can grow more food with less water, less seeds, no agrochemicals, and sometimes get double, triple their yields. Wow, that's a bold vision out of a bowl of rice. And, <laughs> and, uh, what, and what's your role in all of this? So I'm Carol Levine, I'm Ken's partner in this amazing um, small company with a big mission. Um, my role is um, more on the marketing and sales side. So to me, um, when we started this Intent and Vision back in 1995, it was to keep the biodiversity of rice alive um, while helping the small family farmer um, partake in a global marketplace. So we, we do this by, um, by having the um, trying to ingratiate to the consumer, to the customer, that they too can be a part of the solution. So um, if you want um, better for you and that it's more nutritious. So these are whole grain rices that cook up in less time. So each of these rices have very um, distinctive cooking qualities, taste, texture, color, and nutritional value. So imagine a, a whole grain rice like a Bhutanese red rice which is grown 8,000 feet high in the Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan and irrigated with glacier water. Imagine that this whole grain rice cooks in only 20 minutes. So you don't have to, and it's got this soft texture and very complex earthy mushroomy nutty taste. So you no longer have to wait you know, an hour for your whole grain rice and you have something that pairs beautifully whether you're a vegan or a vegetarian or you eat fish and meat as your protein. It just makes any dish really a special, a special meal. So um, basically we want to really show the, the consumer that nutrition is very important and they know that and so if they want something nutritious these rices being grown more sustainably are highly highly nutritious um, and, wow. and good for you and are these all your product are these, these are just a fraction of the products mm -hmm. um, and and um, um, forbidden rice a beautiful black rice from China uh, Madagascar pink rice, um, pink rice from Madagascar, organic brown jasmine rice, Mekong flower from Cambodia. Um, what's not here is a California grown sushi rice that we infuse with bamboo leaf extract. We call it jade pearl rice. Um, organic carnaroli from Italy, chef's um, choice for world class risotto making. 
Um, what am I missing? Missing... Boutonese red, red rice, um, which is one of my personal favorites. Um, How many rices in the world are there? Good question. I would say hundreds of thousands of varieties. Yeah, it's Yet interesting the, the biodiversity loss that's uh, happening out there in the world of rice, actually happening everywhere uh, for all crops. Even in America here, we think there's such a large selection of apples, and they're going by the wayside. Uh, but there's a comeback. You see more heirloom tomatoes and heirloom potatoes. And I think I heard uh, recently uh, that in uh, Thailand there was uh, 37,000 varieties of rice being cultivated um, just uh, maybe like 30 years ago. And now um, I think there might be like 37 or something crazy no, representing, like half, of, representing half right. of representing half of what's produced in Thailand. And then the other half, 50% of rice is being produced is two, two varietals. So it's, you know, it's probably the jasmine rice that you see mainly out there. So all these monocultures pop up and to the detriment of the biodiversity of whatever we're talking about. And so um, that's another thing we're trying to do is to preserve the biodiversity of rice, allow farmers to really continue to proliferate and grow the rice varietals that are culturally significant to their society, ones that they like to eat, you know, sit around and share a meal with friends and family as opposed to being consumed by having higher yields because they have small plots of land and farmers, like farmers here, they want to maximize on their, the amount of land that they have and, and have more. But if you can, it's, I think it's really odd to, see, to witness because you know, these old varieties of rice, they're the ones who have survived millennia. They're the ones who are here now because they are the strong survivors and yet Someone wants to say that they can splice in some gene, you know, like, like look at the Monsanto Roundup Ready stuff. You know, that stuff is failing now. There's super weeds growing. Well, what are they going to do? You know, so now I hear their next play is to do the active ingredient in Agent Orange is what they're going to reprise as or DDT type of stuff that's already been shown to be bad. Anyways, that's... I'm kind of going off on the a big rip. story on uh, biodiversity around how supporting your heirloom <laughs> varieties of rice bringing it to the marketplace, hopefully supports and encourages biodiversity in some of these uh, landscapes where you have such rich culture and, and farming uh, traditions. You mind showing me a little around? Sure. We're at your office here in uh, your global headquarters, Worldwide right? Global headquarters of uh -huh. Foods. <laughs> this is the Rice Goddess Sri. Uh-huh. Yeah, greeting you upon walking in. Nice, all right. <laughs> Mainly a kind of a warehouse kind of space that we've built in some workstations. A little kind of a break room and... And you have like you serve rice every day. Yeah, these are, we did a little tasting today. Uh, Carol did a training at Whole Foods. And I these see. Are surgical grade stainless steel pots. Uh -huh. So it's kind of an, uh, a uh, response to consumers saying that they didn't want to eat out of aluminum based pots uh, bonded in Teflon. Uh, these materials are, you know, shown not to be the most healthy and so um, as a response to consumers clamoring for them we kind of got into the rice cooker business okay you're doing we got lotus rice cooker right? yeah <laughs> and there's a little mini one a mini me yeah, so that'll be coming out shortly <laughs> okay yeah. interesting and you can get them on our website lotusfoods.com okay so we're playing around with some shippers so holiday time comes around stores they don't have room on shelves and so come up with these little cardboard displays it uh, gets an off-shelf display, it gets a little more attention, you put them on deal so they're promotional items and kind of more of a marketing type of a way to reach out to more consumers. Right. So, you know, you see some workstations around here. So End of the kind day. Of the accounting side of the operation. Everybody went home. Everybody's gone home. That's good. That's uh, operations and sales support and uh, order fulfillment goes on here. Um, and we do a little kind of a mini warehouse, so we keep uh, little bits of uh, product on hand to support our um, our broker network sales sales yeah, brokers. You sell uh, Whole Foods, you mentioned, but who else buys your rice? Yeah, so uh, mainly we sell to distributors. So maybe 95% of our sales is through distribution. So that's uh, you know companies with uh, trucks and brick and mortar warehouses all around the country. And we service uh, the natural foods class of trade, so that's maybe 55% uh, of our business. 
uh, which is uh, typically to people like your Whole Foods type of stores, your cooperative stores, uh, you know, own, uh, worker owned type of cooperatives, independent natural food stores, as well as uh, upscale kind of a food service type of chef environment. So, uh, and you know, maybe some corporate dining, you know, like Google type of campuses. Does um, Google, do they buy your rice? Uh, yeah, I think they get it through distribution through a okay. company called. Uh, and so here you see some bulk bags. This is our forbidden rice, our best selling rice. It's a black rice, it's a whole grain, it's super nutritious. Same antioxidant properties like that of blueberries without the sugar and more fiber. It's uh, been on Dr. Oz for the last uh, couple times in the last year. We've been really fortunate to get that kind of a plug, but uh, it's really nutritious and delicious. Uh, you can see uh, things like. Uh, one cup samples, you know, samples drive the business. You know, chefs want to taste the stuff. This is the Bootsinese red rice we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is a rice uh, called Carnaroli rice. It's uh, more for making risotto. Uh, it comes from Italy. Um, so you can see the retail bags we had, but everything in retail comes in bulk sizes too. And so that's for bulk bin usage or for chefs and things like that or caterers. Mm. Um, so we pick and pack some stuff here for either stores or restaurants that don't buy from our distributors um, or uh, just to sell to like um, Cisco is a big uh, food service entity they sell to they call, call it broad line distributors so you can buy food you know dishwashing equipment you know laundry type of things and so they have um, uh, an extension of Cisco it's called um, Chef X and so it's their way to be able to say, yeah, we have some cool artisanal stuff too. And you go online and you order it. And then it, the orders show up on our fax machine. We drop ship on their FedEx account. So let me ask you something. You've, been, you've built this company. You've been at it how many years? This is uh, going on 17 years. 17 years. And I know it has been a long, challenging journey. Yeah. And uh, what has inspired you to keep going? You're not being a millionaire, uh, no, bring, we're not. bringing heirloom we're not. rice to the world. But, you know, it's very exciting because we started off with a market research trip through China. And we just kind of toured around for a couple months. And we were really just looking for a business idea. And while you're traveling, you have to eat. And we discovered there's really, really cool rice out there. We had just relocated from the East Coast to the West Coast. And uh, so we thought living in San Francisco Bay Area that rice would be a, a nice departure point to start a company uh, because we thought there were some unique varieties that people hadn't seen before. And so while we think we live in the melting pot and we have all kinds of food from all around the world and all kinds of people to enjoy them with, but really rice was kind of a stale category. If you said uh, specialty rice to people back then, It'd be like, oh, basmati, jasmine, maybe some wild rice, and maybe some rice to make risotto like arborio. And if you ask people that now, 15, 16 years later, it's the same answers, except for the, inter the varieties of rice that we've introduced to Americans. And so there's still great opportunity out there. And so, but the, the big thing I, when we started talking was uh, this whole SRI system of rice intensification. That, that's the, uh, you know, what's kept us in the game, you know, we kind of, you know, we're building from a bootstrap type of company and just kind of, we, we, we said, let's just keep going until we can't go anymore. And new opportunities kept coming up. And the big one is when Cornell came out to ask us if we'd be interested in connecting us to farmers who are uh, using a more sustainable way to grow rice. And that was like the light bulb moment. It was that when did that moment. happen? That was about five years ago. Yeah. And then we started traveling around to Madagascar, the birthplace of this new way to grow rice. You went to um, Cambodia and then to India. And, and there's some really exciting things going on. We're now looking at uh, opportunities in Sri Lanka and possibly Mali. And um, there's many things going on around the world. About 42 countries now have adopted this way to grow rice. And so now with, uh, we just think uh, with the financial crisis that maybe people are reassessing what's important for themselves in life and I think people are realizing that eating healthy good food especially given the, our health crisis that's going on and the amount of obesity and diabetes and people are realizing that what they put in their bodies is really important so we're hoping to tap into that whole you know be part of the solution help you know around the world whether it's uh, environmental or social issues but also I think ultimately consumers they want something what's in it for me too so you know, if they can eat more nutritious food that tastes great, 
and has cool names and looks sexy, whatever. It's it's kind of a fun way to make social and environmental change all at yeah, once. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.